The tale of two cities in Gary, Indiana continues. Like most Rust Belt cities post-industrialization, no part of Gary went untouched by the specter of poverty, even the educational system. The Gary Public School Corporation today stands in stark contrast to the famous work-study-play system created by Gary's first school superintendent, William Wirt, in the early 1900s. Under Wirt's leadership, Gary's public schools were national models of excellence and innovation. How have the public schools in Gary changed and why? What is needed to address current challenges? Are new academic players competing to shape the educational futures of its youth? Are school districts in Indiana funded adequately and equitably? Who is responsible and accountable? What about the kids? Opinions abound. When I think about the educational system here in Gary, um, the first thought that comes to mind is that we are tremendously challenged. We had one of the premier educational systems in the country. When I talk to people who are educators, who are retired educators, they talk about the fact that they came to Gary because it was renowned all over the U.S. that there was uh, not only high salaries here, but there was a way of educating young people here that was cutting edge. So if you look at what we have now, it's very fragmented, it's very uh, sporadic in terms of success, and it's not because um, administrators or teachers don't care. I think it's largely because people are not being consistent, that we're not being consistent in the product that we're offering and the support that we're providing to our children. When I think about the uh, relationship between the tax base and the property taxes that are paid in education, I have a couple of thoughts. The first is that we can have a direct impact on that in City Hall by increasing our assessed valuation, increasing the number of businesses in town. At the same time, I think about property taxes as just being inherently an uneven and inequitable in terms of the way of funding education. And I would suggest that we really do have to review how education is funded in order to ensure equitable achievement among students. We have to look at how we, the message that we're sending when you say that we're going to fund education with property tax dollars because there will always be a lack of equity there. The exodus of manufacturing jobs meant the departure of many middle-class families and businesses, a weakened tax base, as well as fewer social services and property taxes to fund public schools. State support from sales and income taxes still leave Gary schools lacking. Community efforts like the One Church, One School program and the Tillman House attempt to bridge the gap between the limited resources and unlimited potential of Gary youth. But is it enough? The Gary Community School Corporation has definitely changed and not for the better. Gary, Indiana as a city now has more charter schools than any other city in the state of Indiana. Gary, Indiana has lost control of its public education system, it now has an emergency manager. Before the influx of charter schools, there was a governing body, a school board, which made decisions for the system. Now the state controls the public system, no one controls the charter system, and at present we have no cohesive standard for education in Gary, Indiana. According to the census, funding cuts mean that Indiana spends less per student on education than the United States average. Teachers, both past and present, can't help but reminisce about what used to be and what remains today. Oh, it's changed quite drastically since I started. 
For one thing, uh, they do not have the resources that I had when I started. They do not have the caliber of students that they had. And uh, of course, um, the finances are different. We used to get a lot of training. Uh, there was orientation before you went into the classroom. There was orientation before you became an administrator. Uh, I don't, that's not happening now. You know, you come out of school and then you're thrown into the situation. Studies show that getting an education is the primary way that poor and working class kids become most competitive for good jobs and move into the middle class. So a good education can mean that youth in economically challenged cities like Gary, Indiana, still have a chance to make it if they get a good education. What should parents do? What can parents do? Uh, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking for me. Just because of this particular neighborhood I grew up in, I mean, I had four elementary schools in my same neighborhood, so it, it feels like a downfall. You know, you come from a city, six high schools now to just one. We have two children. Um, one, our oldest, she's in fourth grade at Banneker and Marquette Elementary, and our son, he is in third grade at Banneker and Marquette. Um, we would want to, based off of um, who we are and who we are attempting to be a part of in the community, continue to have our children actively be in the Gary Community Schools. At this point, we feel that we can continue to do the elementary levels with the schools based off of the teachers and the compassion that we do see within the teachers. There's a lot of things lacking within the systems. Things such as the sports and the extracurricular activities, things such as the inconsistencies are going on as the state taking over, who's in charge. There's a lot of lack of communication um, between parents and school, the school system. So based off of that, we are sacrificing. That being said, I do believe they're being educated though. So that is happening. I wouldn't make that kind of sacrifice. Economic downturns have touched the lives of each man, woman, and child in Gary. But people on the front line of the educational process, principals, teachers, parents, grandparents, and youth, have been uniquely affected. Resources are in short supply to support William Wirt's belief that all children deserve a good education and much is needed to prepare youth for success in today's global society. My daughter is um, in the second grade at uh, Bailey Preparatory Academy. My son, he's um, in the fifth grade at Maryville Intermediate School. The church that I attend is an absolute blessing to me and as well as our community. We have a after school program where our kids, when they get out of school, um, and my, my, my children participate in also, that they get um, tutoring, uh, mentoring, uh, just a whole gamut of interactions with our pastor. They love our kids, and, and, it, and it, the name of the program is Bridging the Gap. And it's so profound of that name because that's what I see as, as an issue, um, being able to bridge the gap from the school and going home. But it shows with, you know, my son and my daughter's grades, um, the interaction, um, I just love it. People have a different opinion on the emergency manager. I believe that person needs to be from the area to understand the dynamic. You know, being able to relate to um, the kids. I don't know what his vision is and how, how he's gonna do different than the young lady that was there before. My kids go to River Forest School System and uh, New Chicago, Indiana. I don't feel any type of way versus me growing up in Gary school system and my children going to a different school system. Um, I do see improvement in the Gary school system, but I don't see enough as fast as I would like it to be. Parents in Gary are not willing to sacrifice their children's educational futures, even for a city they love and support. This has meant that some parents have made the difficult decision to transfer them to better funded schools in nearby districts and suburbs. And other parents are grappling with this same concern. What do the state and the city of Gary owe its young people? Community administrators and leaders have their opinions about the city's educational challenges and solutions.
You know, when I first came into the district, there was 2,000 teachers, and now we have, well, 2,000 members in the union, which would be teachers and paraprofessionals. Now there's 300. And when, when I'm fighting for the parents, the parents and the teachers, I'm fighting for the kids. That's the big goal right there. It's like uh, I always say, the teachers' working conditions are the children's learning conditions. So if we have poor working conditions, that's the kind of conditions that the children are learning in. We're on our third uh, emergency manager since we've been taken over by the state, so I try to get working relationships with them, although they're out of, from out of our community, but I know at the end of the day, it's about the kids. Sometimes, you know, we're not all on the same page. We're not agreeing all the time, but at the end of the day, what can we do to come together to make this work for the kids? And I think uh, our teachers need to be bold, you know, because now it's like you got to teach to the test, teach to the test, you know. And so I think, but you, you just got to have your own, some backbone, some spine to say, I'm a good teacher and I know what I can do and I know what these kids need. And so we just have to be forceful and as teachers to uh, do what we know works. You know, they could give you 15 programs, 15 computer programs, but if you know Johnny need a book in his hand and if somebody gonna write you up because you give him that book, then you take that. You take that hit for Johnny because Johnny need a book. One of the biggest debates around education in Gary focuses on the growing presence of charter schools. In 2019, there were seven public schools and at least eight charter schools in a city of about 5,000 students and 76,000 residents. Charter schools like Thea Bowman, 21st Century, Gary Lighthouse, and Aspire are independently run, but still receive government funding. Multiple locations, as well as academic and applied tracks, provide students with career choices. To some Gary residents, charter schools represent educational alternatives. For other people, these institutions undermine public schools by drawing the best and the brightest. But economic indicators about Gary show that public and charter schools are pulling from the same pool of students, many of whom are from families facing similar economic obstacles. I've been working in, a, in charter schools for well over 10 years. I do feel like it may be a little bit more work. We dig in deeper into the data. Not saying the public schools don't, but at, at a charter school, we definitely do. There is a lot of tension because it's believed that some of these schools did close because the charter schools moved in. And it's the tension is, you know that charter schools aren't doing anything different or better and I honestly feel that it's not about public and just being a charter school all the time it's about the commitment of the teachers and the educators in the school and how much they want to see the students succeed. If we all come together in this community and band together that we could really shine as Gary and show what our students are capable of because we have a lot of bright students and I want them to be looked at in a positive way. So I think the Gary school system can really be powerful. According to some residents, a growing chasm exists between the state-controlled public schools, a revolving door of emergency managers, diminishing funds, and young eager minds, concerned parents, and committed administrators and teachers in Gary. Even when their top priority is the kids, continued tensions exist based on different agendas and approaches to reaching and teaching this tiny, yet irreplaceable population. When I came into uh, the district, I worked for MGT, which is the consulting group who won the bid uh, from DUAB to come in and support and manage the Gary Community Schools. So when I arrived here, I came in as deputy superintendent and senior consultant on the team. So the overall goal is to uh, restore Gary Community Schools. And we were over $100 million in debt. And so our goal is to definitely reduce the debt uh, and set the district up for success. So right-sizing the staff, right-sizing the resources is number one. We need two years of a balanced budget before MGT will leave the project and you know, put, the, put things in place for Gary to be a sustainable district on its own. 
Um, the second side, which I am heavily involved with, uh, is academics and making sure that our teachers are appropriately trained, our leaders are appropriately uh, trained, and that our students have a robust academic opportunity so that they can go on and compete globally. Whether kids are being raised in nuclear families, by single parents or by grandparents, whether they attend elementary, middle, or high schools, and no matter their economic status, parents have similar aspirations for them and expectations from their schools. But does a teaching-learning divide between public and private schools in Gary actually exist? Or do these two types of learning institutions have more in common than not? So I was born and raised in Gary, so I am a product of Gary Public Schools, um, a product of Indiana University Northwest, um, I came to Thea Bowman straight off the stage as a substitute for the last six weeks of school and I've been here ever since 2007. Um, so I am currently the principal. Here at Thea Bowman we're about children first and so from there our goal is to not just mold them with their education but it's also about making sure that we help mold them into the citizens that they are to become. So teaching them about character, teaching them about leadership, um, ensuring that they have those opportunities to go outside of Gary, um, bringing in programs and things that will just help make and mold them into our future leaders. I am currently a first grade teacher at the Bowman Leadership Academy. The first year we moved back, I took a job as a kindergarten teacher in the Gary Public School System. And then at the end of the school year, because they, they, they let go all of the first year teachers for the system. And then, and so, of course, over the summer, I, see, I sought out employment in other areas. You know, I, I then became employed by Thea Bowman that, I, that August, but then September-ish, September, October, I get a call from Gary Public saying, hey, we have a position open, would you like to come in? And so, like, more the, the, the tension on my end of it is like, you know, you, you have all of these new and incoming teachers coming in, and then at the end of the school year, you let them all go and then expect them to sit still and wait for somebody to call you later on to come in for, for, for a job. You know, that, that kind of doesn't work. They kind of lose out on a lot of the younger, uh, younger teachers, the newer teachers coming out, younger teachers coming in because of the stability in the workplace with Gary Public. Education in Gary has changed, more so because times are changing. A lot of the issues that Gary Public has been having is that, like I said, the times have changed, the students have changed, but the teachers have not. And so you get where things are going more digital, things are being majorly technologically advanced, and then you have older teachers who are in the system who refuse to learn the technology. And so you have kids who are at home on tablets all day have being forced to sit in the classroom with a textbook because the teacher doesn't would want to use the Promethean board or doesn't know how to use the Promethean board. My son currently attends um, a Montessori school. He is four years old. Uh, and as a four-year-old who won't be five until October, he is, he's reading, he's doing single-digit edition, um, and things of that nature. So he's actually performing a whole year ahead than most children are at his age. Whether or not I would send him to a Gary Public School at this moment in time, my answer would probably be no. I don't believe that they would be equipped to challenge him as much as he would need to be in order to be productive in their classroom. These discussions and debates about the appropriate nature and scope of education in Gary are sure to continue. Yet residents applaud the innovative partnerships and pipelines between local high schools, the community college, Ivy Tech, and Indiana University Northwest. These alliances translate into more educational and employment opportunities for Gary graduates. I lived all together maybe 25, 26 years in Gary. Um, still have family in Gary, Gary. I have friends who live in Gary. Um, Gary, as far as I'm concerned, is my hometown. 
Um, I, I serve as chancellor at Ivy Tech Community College Lake County campus, but we have two locations in Gary. So the Arts and Sciences Building at um, Indiana University Northwest um, campus, and also we offer classes at the Gary Area Career Center. What 21st Century Charter Schools has decided to do is to have dual enrollment, which means what? They means while they're in school, they're taking not only high school courses, but they can actually spend part of the day enrolled in college courses. You have a high school sophomore that will, will be graduating from Ivy Tech this May with, a, with an associate degree so you're gonna have many, many of these students, okay, by the time they graduate from high school, they will have either a technical certificate, 30 credit hours, or possibly an associate degree, which is 60 credit hours. That gives them, in my opinion, the, not only the leverage, but the confidence that you need in order to attain a degree to compete at the college level. You have to meet them where they're at. And many of them are not gonna tell you what their fears are, right? But many of them is because they lack that confidence. It's the confidence, it's the support system, knowing that they could do this, okay? So you have to teach them at a young age, okay? Encourage them that this can be done. The model is, um, instead of um, using the public dollars for um, home ec classes mm -hmm. or um, using it for, you know, um, advanced art classes, we take those funds and we use them instead um, to one, qualify our students through the occupation to take college classes at the local community college, which is known as Ivy Tech. Um, we also partner with Indiana University Northwest, and we also partner with Vincennes University. Charter doesn't mean better, but it does mean different, and that's what makes us different uh, from a lot of schools. Um, I would say probably 70% um, of this class is going um, to school, but 100% of them are doing something. So either they're going to college or they're going to the military. How can the people of Gary move schools forward? Can Gary actualize the plans and promise of the 275 teachers, 80 paraprofessionals, and 50 administrators in its public school system? Can parents, teachers, administrators, and local and state leaders unite to make more effective decisions? Should the voices of students be included in conversations that will inevitably affect their lives and futures? A student-focused mindset and money are central to the equation. Ideas abound. Kids are kids. I don't wanna say that teaching in an urban school is just like teaching somewhere else, because it's not. There are certain things that you have to do. There are certain things you have to prepare yourself for because you are in an urban setting. But as far as the students were concerned, um, they wanted to learn. I didn't care what color they were. I'll never forget as a small child how different groups would come in just to look at our system because we had a top-notch educational system. So we need to find out where we lost it. And that's, that's on us, those of us who are still here in Gary. These are our babies. They live in this community. Everybody can't move to Miraville, Crown Point, Diet. They live here. So we've got to take care of our babies that are here. No place is perfect. But it can be awesome as long as we stick together as a group, as long as we keep the most important thing about education, and that's those babies. Everything else, if those babies are not the number one, then we're wasting our time. In spite of what has happened to Gary and to the school district and the negative opinion about Gary, there are still um, staff members, administrators, and teachers who care about what they do. They care about the students. And in spite of everything. They are still out there working. They are spending their monies, uh, you know, to make sure that students are successful. So I think we need to do a better job in helping our parents and not just writing them off. Like, well, they don't care or, because we know they care and we know they send us the best that they have. And so we, as teachers, as administrators, as a district and a whole, we got to do more. You know, there's a lot to it. It's hard to just give one answer about what to fix because there's just so many different factors in being able to get our kids on the right track because no, it's no cookie cut. The, the church community, which is large in the city of Gary, uh, can no longer just be the place where you come to worship on Sunday. Uh, we must be willing to address the life needs of the people we serve. 
And so if our children need academic assistance, uh, they ought to be able to get it at church. Um, that, that academic success is paramount and we are pushing all of our children to do it. And I don't believe it to be a way out. I didn't grow up looking for a way out. I grew up looking for a way up. And, and, and when you look for a way up instead of a way out, then you don't have a problem uh, coming back and contributing to the community uh, that has nurtured you. What does the future hold for the Gary Public School Corporation? How will charter schools continue to fare? Only time will tell. But just as more funding is needed, thoughtful plans and policies at the state and local levels are a must. Responsible and accountable adults must continue to champion this cause. Ultimately, only strategies and solutions that are about the kids will determine the success of these efforts. The well-being and future of the youth and Gary depend on it. <laughs>